Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbera. This is AP Physics Chapter 8, Momentum, Impulse, and Collisions, Video 1. Today's topic is momentum and impulse. The objectives are, know the momentum is a vector quantity. Understand Newton's second law in terms of momentum. Understand the relationship between momentum and the impulse. Be able to compare and contrast between momentum and kinetic energy. Be able to apply momentum impulse theorem to solve problems. Momentum is related to mass and velocity. Momentum is equal to mass multiplied by velocity. So unit of momentum is uh, um, mass is kilograms and velocity is meters per second. So it's just kilograms times meter per second. The plural of momentum is momentum. So momentum equals to m times v. So as uh, this formula indicated, momentum is a vector quantity. It has the same direction as velocity. Momentum is a vector quantity. A particle's momentum have the same direction as its velocity. So because momentum is a vector quantity, so when, I, when we add vectors, we have to add according to vector rule. We cannot simply add p equals to pa plus pb. We have to use Pythagorean theorem to add it. Newton's second law in terms of momentum. So sum of the force is m times a. a is change velocity divided by change of time. So m times change velocity, that's change of momentum. So sum of the force is change of momentum over change of time. When delta t approaches to zero, net force equals dp over dt. That's the derivative of momentum relative to t. So the net force, so vector sum of all forces acting on a particle equals to the time rate of change of the momentum of the particle. According to this equation, a rapid change in momentum requires a large net force, while gradual change in momentum requires less net force. Impulse momentum theorem. Since sum of the force is delta P over delta T, so we can rearrange it. We get delta P equals the sum of the force times the time. When delta T is very, very small, we have delta P would be integral from T1 to T2, F times dt. The quantity F times delta T, sum of the force times delta T is called the impulse. It's, we have a letter for impulse, it's called J. Impulse is a vector quantity. Its direction is the same as the net force. The SI unit for impulse is Newton times a second, or times time. Because when Newton is, is the, Newton is MA, so it's one, Newton equals one kilograms times meter per second squared. So an alternative set unit for impulse is this times second will give you kilograms times a meter per second. It's the same unit for momentum. So that's why impulse equals to change in momentum. So impulse equals F times T. This is when force is constant. When force is uh, uh, changing with time, impulse equals to the integral of a force times DT. So since delta P equals to impulse, so we can say J equals to change in momentum also. So the change in momentum of particle during a time interval equals to the impulse of the net force that acts on the particle during that time interval. This is called the impulse momentum theorem. And this is valid even when net force varies with time. When a force changes with time, this whole integral is still equals to P2 minus P1. The area under Ft graph equals to the impulse because impulse is force times time. So in the force versus time graph, the area equals to impulse. So the area under the curve of net force versus time equals to impulse of the net force. Area equals to Jx is integral of sum of the force in x dt. We can also calculate impulse by replacing varying net force with the average net force. So the area equals average impulse equals average force equals area equals impulse, which is average force times T2 minus T1. So this one says both areas are the same. 
And this blue one saying the larger force acts for a short time is have the same impulse as a smaller force acts on the longer time. So this is what we talked about last year. Remember you did an egg drop project. So for the contraption, you have to protect the egg is to extend the time to reduce impact force. And because when you drop an egg, both um, doesn't matter which how you drop it, if you drop from the same height, the impulse is the same. But some egg breaks, some some does not break, that's because the force acting on it. That is because you want to extend the time of impact to reduce the force. J and P are both vector quantities. So J impulse has the same direction as the force. P has the same direction as velocity. Because it has vector quantities, it has X, Y components. So PX equals to MVX, PY, MVY, PZ equals MPZ. M times VZ. J also, JX is FX times T equals to change of PX. That means M times V2X minus M times V1X. This is after, this one is before, how velocity change. And same for Y, you look for velocity change in the Y direction. Compare momentum and the kinetic energy impulse in the work. So momentum, change in momentum equals to J, change in kinetic energy equals to work. So one is impulse, the other change is work. Impulse is force times time, work is force times distance. Take a look at this guy throwing the baseball. So kinetic energy gained by the ball is the total force times total displacement. So net force is the same during this throw. Displacement S, how much is the displacement determines the kinetic energy. How much time he um, throws, carries through, that determines the momentum. So the impulse momentum relationship depends on the time. So the area under FT graph is the impulse. While the work energy theorem depends on the distance. So the area of FS graph, S is the uh, dis displacement, that is the work. Or sometimes we use FD graph, that's work. So FT graph is the impulse, FD graph is work, or FS graph is work. So here is mathematical relationship between momentum and the kinetic energy we can, that can be useful, useful in a lot of uh, um, questions. P equals MV, K equals one half MV squared. So we can manipulate the equation, we multiply m and divide by m. So if we do that, on top becomes p squared, and on the bottom becomes p squared over 2m is the same as k. So that's how momentum and the kinetic energy related. Let's do an example. An ice boat, the ice boat have mass m and 2m, and the wind exerts the same constant force on each ice boat. Two ice boats start from rest and cross the finishing line at distance S away. So both have the same force, has the same displacement. Which ice boat crossed the finishing line with greater kinetic energy? We did this question already. Change kinetic energy equals force times distance. Since the force is the same, distance is the same, so kinetic energy has to be the same. Next question, which ice boat crossed the finishing line with greater momentum? So change in momentum equals to J, right, equals to force times the time. So which one do you think is going to use a longer time to get there? So obviously it's 2M. 2M is going to take a longer time to get there. This is because 2M have a smaller acceleration than the, uh, just the M boat, the red boat has only uh, a mass of M will get there a lot quicker. So 2M going to take a longer time, so 2M going to end it up with a greater momentum. Here is another way to look at it. Kinetic energy equals to P squared over 2M. So P is equals to 2M times K. Basically P, since K is the same, so the bigger mass will have a bigger momentum. So that that is another way to look at this question. With the same kinetic energy, the more massive boat has more momentum. 
Let's take a look at this question. Suppose you throw a ball with mass 0.4 kilograms against a brick wall. It hits the wall, moving horizontally to the left at 30 meters per second and rebound horizontally to the right at 20 meters per second. Find the impulse of the net force on the ball during its collision with the wall. So here is your VI. VI is negative 30. Remember your velocity is a vector quantity. So negative means to the left, positive means to the right. So J equals the change in momentum, 20 minus negative 30. So you will have 20 Newton times second. B, if the ball is in contact with the wall for 0 0.010 seconds, find average horizontal force. So force equals to impulse divided by time. So impulse divided by time, you have 2,000 Newtons to the right. Another uh, example. A soccer ball has a mass 0.4 kilograms. Initially, it is moving to the left. So VI to the left, negative 20 meters per second. But then it is kicked and given a velocity 45 degrees upward to the right with a magnitude of 30 meters per second at an angle. Find the impulse of the net force and the average net force, assuming the collision time is 0 0.01 seconds. So that's the impulse. Impulse equals the change in momentum. Remember, both the impulse and the momentum are vector quantities. So basically, you have to uh, calculate vectors, vectors, so using vector rules. So let's see J equals delta P. That means Jx equals delta Px and Jy equals delta Py. Jx equals m times the change in velocity in the x direction. JY equals to mass times change of velocity in the Y direction. So here is what's given. M is 0.4. V1X equals to negative 20. V1Y equals to 0 because initially the ball is only moving in the horizontal direction. V2X equals to 30 times cosine 45. That's the X component of a V2. And V2Y, that's the Y component, is 30 times sine 45. So when you plug this O in, you can find a Jx and a Jy. Then, what is the impulse? Impulse equals a Jx squared plus Jy squared. That equals 18.6 times kilograms, uh, 18.6 kilograms times a meter per second. But J, uh, impulse is vector quantity. We also need to find its direction. The direction we can use inverse tan of a JY divided by JX is 27 degrees above horizontal. Next one, what is the net force? Net force is just J divided by delta T. That's uh, this number divided by 0.01. So we have 1,860 Newtons. You will have the same direction as J. J and F are, um, have the same direction. Last question, test your understanding. Rank the following situation according to the magnitude of impulse from the largest value to the smallest value. Value means magnitude. So in each situation, uh, it's a 1,000 kilogram automobile is moving along a straight east-west road. So the impulse equals the change in momentum. Impulse also equals the force times time. So in some cases, they give you change in momentum. For example, the first one, you know initial and you know the final. And for that's one and two. For number three, you know the force and you know the time. So you can calculate for each one, then compare which one is largest to smallest. You only consider the magnitude, not the direction. So after you calculate, you should have this answer. Largest is five, one and two are the same, and three and four are the same. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.